اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و الصلاة و السلام علی سیدنا محمد و آله الطاهرین This is our fourth session uh, The topic is uh, the science of hadith or علوم الحدیث or study of traditions Inshallah, today we are going to learn something about the meaning of hadith. What is hadith? What does it mean? About ulum al-hadith or science of ahadith, science of uh, tradition. Hadith collection, the history of hadith collection, what happened to the history, how it was collected. And ilm al-diraya, ilm al-diraya, the science of, we can say, reflection or understanding and also ilm rajal the science of people to understand the people now what is hadith you know hadith has a very important role in uh, islamic uh, fiqh in islamic understanding because we have two major and main sources in islam one is quran and one is hadith here when we talk about hadith, we mean whatever comes from Rasulullah, peace be upon him. Whether his words, whether his action, his, uh, uh, for example, support, even sometimes he's in a meeting and somebody is doing something and he's silent or he support. We call this also hadith. We call this as a sunnah of Rasulullah. And it is hujjah. In fiqh, there is a very good discussion about the hujjah and the proof of uh, even the silent of uh, Rasulullah or Imam. For example, in the presence of Imam or Prophet, if something happened, if a mu'min or a Muslim or somebody does something and Imam is silent or Rasulullah is silent or approves that, by his action, not saying anything, just approved by his action or be silent, we call this as a hujjah. And uh, we'll discuss in fiqh and usul about the uh, reason that why we, in this case, we call this hujjah and proof. So when we talk about hadith, it includes all these things. First part is what is hadith, the meaning of hadith. So I may ask, uh, Muhammad to start the first part of this uh, sheet. Hadith. Hadith are all traditions relating to the words and deeds of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and I have faith. Hadith collections are regarded as the important tool for determining the sunnah or Muslim way of life by all traditional schools and traditions. Hadith literally means a saying or something new. In Islamic terminology, it is defined as the individual-to-individual -individual narratives ascribed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, regarding his sayings, actions expressed, actions expressed or, or tacit proved, his life history and personal description. Mm -hmm. The hadith is the record is the, is the record the hadith is the record of the saying of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The saying and conduct of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Come constitutes the sunnah. In most cases, the word sunnah and hadith are used as interchangeable synonyms by the scholars of the science of hadith. The hadith has come to supplement the Holy Quran as a source of Islamic religious law. The hadith is the second pillar after the Quran upon which every Muslim rests his faith. Hadith consists of matan and isna. Matan, matan means the text of the hadith, while isna means the chain of transmitter. Very good, thank you. So in this part, we understand the meaning of hadith. Hadith comes from hadatha. And hadatha means something new or something happens recently. So hadith has several meanings. One meaning is uh, something is new. One meaning is a word or tradition. So here, what we say is whatever comes from Rasulullah, or Ahl al-Bayt, we call Hadith. And also, Sunnah. What is Sunnah? 
Sunnah also is the action or whatever happened from Rasulullah or Aemma, we call Sunnah. So in many cases, when we say Hadith, it includes Sunnah. When we say Sunnah, it includes Hadith. For example, when we say Ahlul Sunnah, it means Ahlul Hadith. When you say Ahlul Hadith, it means Ahlul Sunnah. So Sunnah, in this case, uh, in many times, uh, uh, we can use it in this same meaning. And also, we understand about Matn and Isnad. Matn and Isnad. In every single Hadith, it has two parts, or it has two dimensions. One part is matn, which is the contents, and one part is isnat, the chain of narratives. So, inshallah, later on we will talk about uh, mat, what is mat, and definition of mat. There are some rules, there are some qualities for mat to be accepted as a good hadith or hasan. And also there are some other signs or other um, qualities for snot. So maybe out of thousands and thousands of hadith, we just collect and select some hadith as a good hadith and real hadith. The others doesn't include all these uh, qualities and all these things. So in the meaning of hadith, we understand the meaning, the sunnah and math and snot. Second part, ulum al-hadith, or this, yes. Matn. For example, if in hadith, Rasulullah says, an-nidhafatu min al-iman, for example. An-nidhafa min al-iman. Matn means the, the words. An-nidhafa min al-iman. Whatever is mentioned in this hadith, we call matn. Isnad is the narrator of this matn. For example, where is it from? We, we, we don't hear, uh, hear this hadith from Rasulullah. Somebody else narrates for us and records for us. So we call those people who records heart by heart, one by one, uh, we call them isnad or the chain of narrators. We'll talk more about this. So we go to second part which is ulum al-hadith. Yes. What if uh, the Prophet was practicing with Taqiyya at that time and people are recording what he's doing as the hadith? How do you differentiate between that? Good question. Actually, in the time of uh, Prophet, peace be upon him, there was no Taqiyya because uh, it was the beginning of Islam and uh, it was the responsibility of Rasulullah to convey the message from Allah to everybody. If uh, he would be able or he would be wishing to do taqiyya, what happened in Mecca, what happened in Medina, and uh, all those things, difficulties, problems came to Rasulullah because he didn't do taqiyya. Because his time was not the time of taqiyya. Yes, maybe some other uh, companions like Ammar Yasir. We have a very good story about Ammar and Yasir, Ammar and his father Yasir, that he did, they did taqiyya. Ammar did taqiyya, but his father didn't do taqiyya. So his father martyred and became shaheed, but Ammar saved. So uh, for uh, Rasul and for Aemma, usually they don't, don't do taqiyya. But if they do taqiyya, in another situation, they will explain. For example, in the time of Imam alayhi salam, alayhi salam, Imam Sadiq, Imam Baghir, if in some cases they did something as taqiyya, immediately after that situation, they will explain to the followers that, you know, that point that I told you, it was in taqiyya time, it was in uh, secret time, so don't take it serious, and this is the reason that you have to do this. But usually we don't have this for Rasulullah. Okay, so you continue the second part. Yes, because you are doing tariya and you have to. 